Hey everybody, it's Sunday night, and where are you guys? You're right here for Sonya Report Live. We have a lot, a lot to talk about. I've jam-packed this hour. We are going to chat about uh, the Met Gala. There's also been a couple really cool stories I saw around, and there's been a sewing update on our friend Craig Conover from Southern Charm, so I'm very excited. We're doing things a little bit differently this week. I tried to schedule this stream ahead of time. If that's something you like, let me know if you didn't like it. Also, let me know it was a bit tricky to set up, and I feel like I'm going to mess this up somehow. But uh, for now, we are here. Okay, so the first thing on Monday, there was the Met Gala. It's like this very fancy event in New York City that is put on by Vogue, and Anna Wintour is like sort of in charge of it. I guess she like yays or nays the guest list. Lots of really important people there, and the fashion is always super over the top. So that's why I thought this was a very interesting, like I was checking out the fashions and I wanted to highlight some of the stuff I saw because it was kind of crazy. So let's go to the slideshow because I thought it was kind of kind of nuts. Now for, for copyright reasons, uh, we are going to be, how can I say this? I'm not going to be full screening this, but uh, we're going to take a look at some of the outfits. I think the fashion at this thing is pretty, I'm going to say kind of bizarre, maybe, you know, this year, it, they always have like a theme, like it could be like fantasy, it could be, I guess like one year they had kind of like a religion theme. This year it's called Camp Notes on Fashion. And uh, that, it, I guess camp means like really over the top, really exaggerated. So I saw some outfits. All right, let's see. So this is Lady Gaga and she had like a bunch of different looks. This one is sort of like a, like a bizarro Mary Poppins, I guess. She also had one where she was like dressed like kind of like a like a stripper or something. She was in like her bra and underwear. So lots of very unique looks. Now I love Lady Gaga. Her fashion, I don't always quite understand. She's always kind of going for it. So yes, yeah, so this is her, I guess she went from like governess for a European family to, to this. Um, very bold choice. Not sure if that's something I would go with, but it's Lady Gaga. She wears dresses made of meat. So what are you, what are you going to do? Uh, let's see. This, okay, I'm not really sure who these, okay, this is, oh, Harry, okay, and there's a thing at the bottom telling me who these people are. I don't know who everyone is. This is Harry Styles and Gucci and Alessandro Michelle. Don't really know who that is. I mean, I kind of like the tops they have on. That's something I, you know, like the ruffles. I, I actually, the hairy shirt on the left, that's something I kind of want for myself. So that's interesting. The headpiece on the guy on the right, don't know much about that, but it's, it's very, it's very interesting. Okay, uh, Serena Williams and her husband, Alexis Ohanian. Now, if you don't know, Alexis is the founder, the co-founder of Reddit. And they actually met in a super cute way. If you have not seen their story, it's very, very sweet and very cool. And I think they're a super cute couple. I really, I like her dress. I think her dress is very feminine. I really like the color. I think it works for her. And I, I do, I do like this outfit. I will say though, when I was watching this, I like red carpet coverage, I thought 90% of the outfits just, to me seemed like, I know they're supposed to be over the top, but they seem just like I, I, I was just scratching my head because I didn't really know what to do with, with these thoughts. So some of them I was like, yeah, I don't, I don't know about this stuff. Okay. The, oh, this one was one of the more unique outfits. This is Jared Leto, you know, from my so-called life. And I don't know what he's been up to lately, but apparently getting an outfit made that makes him look like some sort of like renaissance type dude and the bet like he kind of looks like he's an extra on game of thrones like as one of the lords or something and he's carrying his own he head you know what if he had gotten more creative though i think he could have made that into a handbag that would have been a little more interesting this was certainly a unique outfit he's really going for the the like long hair don't care look and uh, I don't know. I almost feel like he's channeling Jesus too, like his with the hair. No, the outfit's definitely not right, but this is, yeah. I mean, this is this is pretty, pretty strange. Um, all right. Next up is this is Billy Porter, and he had like a bunch of people carrying him in on like a like a chair. 
So that was kind of interesting. Um, this is Jordan Roth. Don't really know who that is. Uh, Aquafina. So I just wanted to show you some of the outfits. This is Aquaria. Again, I'm, I'm not familiar with some of these people. Ryan Murphy and Christian Siriano. Oh, Celine Dion. I'm kind of liking that. She looks like a Vegas showgirl, and clearly that is something she has experience with because she did have a residency in Vegas. This is our girl, Rachel Brosnahan, from the uh, what Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. I kind of like the dress. I don't know about the bows on the front, but I think I, I kind of saw where she was going with that, I suppose. I don't know. All right, and we've got Regina Hall. I'm trying to find some of the more... I'm going to skip over these people. Kylie Jenner. So if you go to the Vogue, if you go to the Vogue uh, YouTube channel, which I was kind of perusing this week, they actually had a lot of really cool featurettes on the fashion of the Met Gala. And one of the videos they had was Kylie Jenner. Um, and she was kind of going through the process of getting her dress, her dress made. This is Versace. And she like, and they did this for a lot of celebrities as they would go behind the scenes and you actually saw these dresses being all and outfits being altered. There were a bunch of seamstresses there. So there were, there are a lot of really cool videos just about the process and about the designs and about how their, how their dresses are made. And I think for fashion, that's, and for us as uh, people who sew, I thought that was a really neat look at how these things come together. A lot of these dresses required hundreds of hours of work. Obviously, these are super expensive and custom made for all of these very, very high profile people. But I really, I, I gotta say though, I think Kylie has a really interesting fashion sense and I, I like the feathers and the sleeves. I'm, I'm a fan of the sleeves. So, all right, that is uh, Cara Delevingne and her sister Kendall actually had a really cool sort of complimentary dress that was orange. All right, this is Lana Condor. Again, half of these people, I'm not really familiar with them, so I'm going to try to skip ahead to the people. Ooh, Alexander Skarsgård. True Blood? Pretty Little Lot, or, uh, what was it? Big Little... Is it Big Little Lot? Wait. I watched the show, Big Little Lies. I cannot say that. Um, yeah, he was one of my favorite characters on True Blood. Naomi Scott, not familiar. Billy Lord, okay, Carrie Fisher's daughter. But if you were kind of checking out this coverage, let me know which outfit did you think kind of stuck out as good or bad or like, what do you guys think? Okay, and we're going to go into this, but I do encourage you, check out the Vogue YouTube channel because they had some really great feature, behind the scene features on how this stuff comes together. And they were very, they were just super cool. All right, let me try to find the, okay, here's the YouTube channel. Hold on a second. All right, we're going to go, we're going to go there. And I hope I'm, I haven't really checked the comments yet, but uh, if you are here, let me know where you're watching from. And are you guys having a good week? Ha oh, yes, and happy Mother's Day to everyone out there. I spent the day with my mom yesterday because I knew I had to do this today. So we had a great day. And uh, we, we had dinner and we watched a movie. So... Okay, and at the end, I'm going to be answering questions, reading comments, and we will get to our Instagram shoutouts. So if you guys haven't been to the Vogue YouTube channel, I don't get like Vogue magazine or anything like that. But I did think that the, I did really like the behind the scenes features. I thought those were really cool. So yeah, so you can see like Lady Gaga's looks, Liza Koshy, she's a YouTuber. And some of my favorites, I think, whoa. ooh. Some of my favorites were uh, Kylie Jenner, and then which uh, I watched Kim Kardashian. She had a dress that looked like it was wet, which was very unique. And then, you know, I just thought it was kind of neat that they actually did this whole series on all of the the outfits, and they kind of followed people around. It gave good insight on the design process, and I just thought that was really pretty cool. Another person, I don't know if you guys have been following. Uh, other YouTubers, but J-Lo and her fiancé A-Rod have been vlogging, and they've been putting together some really, like, bomb vlogs. So J-Lo did a whole video on her Met Gala outfit, and also, like, the process that it takes to, like, the process that it takes her to get all this together, 
and I would highly recommend her vlogs and also A-Rod's vlog kind of, they kind of bookend, like they'll do the same event and then they'll have one, they'll have like a vlog on Alex's channel and a vlog on Jennifer's channel and they're really well done and Alex did one on the Os he did one on the Oscars showing like everything it takes to get ready for the Oscars and the amount of work that goes into like getting JLo ready to go out is crazy like it they had 62 62 people at her house for the Met Gala like she, and she it was kind of cool because they showed seamstresses at the house tailors getting them all ready and then Alex his vlog had him like going to yoga because he had to lose no joke six pounds in one day to fit into his tux like couldn't they just let it out for him a little bit i don't know i guess they really wanted him to slim down i guess not that he really needs to slim down but i thought that was kind of kind of interesting that they were they were doing that i don't know so lots of craziness but the matt gala does look like a lot of it does look like a lot of fun and i did enjoy seeing all of the really crazy outfits i thought those were pretty i don't know i thought those were pretty cool do you guys enjoy seeing all of the outfits from all the, these events you know some of them are kind of crazy okay oh and there is one thing i really want to show you too so designer zach posen he and i've linked i've linked all of the stuff i'm talking about in the description box if you guys would like to kind of check it out on your own or read through some of the articles i think they're very interesting and I've had I've enjoyed like going through all this stuff. So Zach Posen, who's a well-known designer, he has been designing 3D printed dresses. And these just really blew me away. I think this is a really innovative thing for fashion. And the dresses he made were so, so cool. So this article, and so he kind of details like which celebrities he made these dresses for. This is the dress being made in the 3D printer. Now, we have a 3D printer. I don't think ours can do anything this elaborate. And also, they're using some... They're definitely not using, like, stock filament in here. But what did they... I forgot what they ended up... So here's some pictures. This is, like, the dress here on the left. And then on the right, they have, like, obviously, like, an underdress. Like, sort of like a line... Like, what we would call a lining. And then... The dress, I mean, I don't even know how they get it on these people. Like, you know, I'm not even sure. Are there two parts and it's put together kind of like a mold? I don't know. But there were several celebrities that wore his 3D printed dresses to the uh, the Met Gala. Oh my gosh. Okay, so Nina Dobrev is one of the celebrities. I really like that dress. It's obviously uh, kind of a, more of a mini dress. So she, she had a 3D printed dress bustier which took 200 hours of stereo lithographic printing yeah 3d printing does take forever wet hand sanding and finished with a clear coat of spray to give it a translucent and glossy translucent and glossy appearance i mean i, I can definitely see that because when you do 3d print stuff you do have to finish it because it has like lines in it from all of the layers so if you so a lot of people actually after you 3d print something you do have to continue to hand finish it after that but doesn't that look amazing okay and this is katie holmes and she has a custom printed kind of like shoulder piece holding up the rest doesn't this look like something that's on game of thrones like something miss sandy or like daenerys would have that's what it kind of looks like to me so this is a custom made gown of 300 yards oh my gosh of hand sewn colored tool that's nuts with a 3D printed collar accessory in the shape of palm leaves, which took pose in 56 hours to print. Sounds about right for 3D printing. This is probably my favorite dress. This is worn by someone named Jordan Dunn. I'm assuming she's some sort of supermodel. And her gown is in the shape of a rose, and it required the 3D printing of 37 petals and the attachment of each of them to an elaborate wearable cage. Imagine wearing a cage. I don't know about that, but it looks really cool. This gown took uh, 1,100 hours of printing and finishing. Oh my gosh. I, I will say, though, I think this is probably my favorite. I think this is such a gorgeous piece of art. I wonder if you if he was going to sell these, what the price would be. I'm, I'm going to guess like, I'm going to guess like thirty to $50,000 for all that work. I don't know. 
This is someone named uh, Deepika Patacone. Okay. She, now this one has 408 custom 3D printed pieces, which Posen put together. Now this is something, you know what? I'm gonna have to experiment. Again, we do have a 3D printer. Maybe I could do something like this. I don't know. So this, she, he did it to look like embroidery in a process that took, oh, this one was only 160 hours. Okay, much better. Julia Garner. Okay, so I think the 3D part is the, okay, the headpiece that looks like a vine. I see, I'm seeing a lot of Game of Thrones inspired stuff. This looks like something that one of the Baratheons would wear or something. All right, this one took 22 hours to print. I, you know what? I'm inspired though, because we do have this printer. Maybe I could try to do something, make some fashion pieces, try to, try to, try to take after Zach Posen, although there's clearly no way I'd be able to do exactly that, but I mean, how cool. I just thought this was so, so different. Uh, so the, the article ends, 3D printing will enable innovative fashion designers to push the boundaries of fashion and construct elements unable to achieve in the past, which is true. That's one thing I do really like about having the 3D printer is that you can literally design and pr print anything you want. So I don't know, out of these 3D printed outfits, which one do you like the best? I have to say, my first choice is the rose dress, and then followed closely by by Nina Dobrev's clear dress. I think the clear dress is really cool too, and I just I love how they he kind of printed it to make it look like it was like moving fabric. I don't know. This is just so so cool. So I just wanted to share that because I saw this and I was like, how neat. And there's also somebody also uh, he was on Good Morning America and he also talked about the gowns and he had models wearing them. So also linked below is a link to the Good Morning America video if you would like to watch it because I just thought it was really a pretty neat thing. So yeah, lots going on in fashion this week and I just kind of thought that was pretty neat. So so yeah, so we're just kind of chatting about all that because uh, I don't know, I just thought it would be fun to talk about. So all right, what else are we gonna talk about? Oh my gosh, I have so much. Okay, so update. Craig Conover, the wonderful young man that graced us with his presence about a week ago, he has done a sewing room tour for Bravo TV. So I just thought it was cool. And Southern Charm is coming back on, what day is today? Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I believe. So May 15th. So Craig is going to be back in action, and they are going to feature his sewing. So go, Craig. So Craig, as a preview, he is sharing a sewing room tour. So, and of course, you know, we got kind of the first exclusive little tour, but this is kind of a more, you know, definitely, definitely one not done with a webcam. But I just wanted to share Craig's sewing space. Uh, so now he, he is a friend of the sewing report. And he's, I mean, look at, he's got, he's got a cutting and sewing table. He's got the shelves for all of his finished works and for his fabric. I mean, hey, you know what? Go Craig. And definitely if you do have cable, I do not have cable. So I'm going to have to kind of try to catch up on Bravo clips and YouTube videos. But if you do have cable and you enjoy Bravo, definitely check out Craig on Southern Charm. He's going to be sewing this season and... And I'm going to guess they're going to show some of the process of of how Sewing Down South, his new company, came together. So they're probably going to be talking about that, but I think it's great exposure for our sewing community. And I really hope, wish Craig the best. I do hope this whole thing is successful because I think he could have a lot of really positive influence in the sewing space. And especially when it comes to trying to bust out of the stereotypes of what someone who sews is like. So go, Craig, and I am looking forward to what you are going to be doing in the future. Okay, so this next update, this is just something kind of funny that I saw on Facebook that might make a good DIY project if you are dealing with theft and if you have a surveillance camera system at your house. So somebody posted this. So apparently someone had an issue with someone stealing pillows off of their front porch. So kind of as a, a small act of vengeance, they have replaced their throw pillows with uh, with new throw pillows featuring a surveillance photo of the perps stealing them. 
I got to give a round of applause to whoever did this. I think this is super, super funny, creative. And if something like this ever happens to me, I'm going to do this. I think this is, <laughs> this is hilarious. I hope, I mean, you can't really tell who did it. Unfortunately, you can't really see their face. But whoever did that, you know, how low are you to steal throw pillows? Are you really that hard up that you're going to steal throw pillows that I don't even think you would get much money for them? You might get like a buck or something, but it's so not worth it. And I just think this is such a, I don't know, that's such a crappy thing to do to somebody, steal throw pillows, really? So, I mean, maybe, so maybe if you do have a surveillance, and we always have surveillance cameras at the homes we own. So if we ever get funny fo funny video like that, I will definitely be taking all the, actually, maybe you could do a quilt with, like, so say you get a bunch of people on camera doing, like, crazy stuff. You compile all the images and maybe make, like, a quilt block of each one. That would be kind of funny. And I mean, they're clear. I mean, clearly this person is trespassing and they're committing a crime. So I don't feel too bad, but I do think it's a, it's kind of at least a small, at least this person got like a small sense of vengeance just from doing this. So hats off to whoever had this idea because I think it's genius and I applaud you. And I do hope you find out whoever stole your throw pillows because clearly it's a really crappy person who did that. I, yeah. I have no sympathy for that person. I and I hope the I hope you're able to catch whoever committed this crime because that that's just not right, just not right. So, anyways, I thought that was kind of a funny, and I did share this on my my own Facebook page. I just thought that was, I mean, how funny? I don't know how funny is that. <laughs> have you ever done anything like that? I don't know. I I totally would. I'm I am definitely that type of person, and I would. Uh, yeah, I would, I would, I would do that. I think that's so funny. Um, I have a weird sense of humor, kind of a dark sense of humor. So I would, I would be, I would be cool with that. Okay, so, and I also want to share this with you, cause just cause I'm silly. So lately, I've not, I've been trying to kind of like slim down a little bit for summer and everything. Not that I'm going to be putting on a bathing suit anytime soon, because that's not happening. And, uh, but. This is what happens. This is actually my refrigerator. And I just wanted to share with you what happens when you order pizza for you and your husband. And then he comes home later with pizza from a different place. So that that's what happened to it. This is, this is Friday at our house. So I had ordered two pizzas and then one of the boxes. I ordered the blackjack pizza. I'm a big fan. It's here in Tampa. And they have like more Detroit style pizza, but their wings are excellent. I'm from Buffalo, New York, so I consider myself a chicken wing connoisseur. And and I have, I have to say there are a couple places here in the Tampa Bay area that I think do chicken wings right. And blackjack pizza is one of them. So I decided to order some blackjack pizza and get some get some barbecue wings for me with blue cheese dressing. If you're from Buffalo, you do not get ranch, man. You you have to have blue cheese. Although they don't do celery, which is another buffalo thing, but that's cool. I've never really been that into celery anyways, so, you know, that's fine. So then later, I was like, I was, and I didn't text my husband, because normally he does not bring food home. Normally I'm the one, I'm the one who does dinner. So for him to bring home food is kind of a rare, like he doesn't usually do that very often. But I still had not like told him, hey, I got pizza. I didn't text him. He was at work. So then he comes home, he walks in the door at like, you know, 1030 and he's holding three pizza boxes. And I'm like, what? I was like, what? Also for, for context as well. So my husband, James, who, who he's been on this channel and he also has his own YouTube channel, More Approved. He uh, works in the restaurant industry. So he, after his, his day was done, he actually went to another restaurant down the street and picked up these pizza these pizzas uh so this is from a, a pizza place called the pizza box in downtown st pete so he got three pepperoni and mushroom pizzas which were very good as well both places were great so i would i would give two thumbs up to either of these places you cannot go wrong but one is in south tampa and one is in downtown st pete so they're definitely in different areas so we now at that point we had five whole pizzas 
and then a box of chicken wings. I don't know how long it's going to take us to eat all of these pizzas. That was Friday. It's Sunday. We still have four pizzas left. So <laughs> we're not doing very good on finishing all of this stuff. If somebody wants to come over and eat the rest of this pizza, let me know. But I'm going to try to eat more. I'm going to try to do my part, take one for the team, and eat more pizza after this show is over. Uh, so, I mean... If you so if you see me kind of busting out of my pants a little bit in the next few episodes, uh, you you know why? It's because I've been eating a lot of pizza. I've been eating ice cream. It has not been pretty, people. And then I went over to my mom's place yesterday, and they were having like burgers and mac and cheese and corn on the cob and what else was there? Oh um oh, and then my stepdad made. My stepdad made us uh, smoothies, and I was like, okay, wait, we were going to watch a movie, and he's like, I'm going to make some smoothies. Do you want one? And I was like, sure. So I figured smoothies, healthy, you know, that's going to be that's gonna be good for my system and stuff. And ironically, too, earlier this week, I bought a bunch of healthy food. I got spinach. I got tomato. Oh, that reminds me. I need to eat the rest of the tomatoes. I've been making BLT sandwiches. So I bought, like apples bananas and i was like i'm gonna make some smoothies and stuff but thanks for the reminder because i really need to tomatoes don't last very long i don't know so i'm gonna need to make more blts i also got some bacon that's not very healthy but anyways my stepdad was making smoothies and then he gave it to me and it had blueberries and bananas i could tell and i was like why did the i was like this is really tasty what's in it so he, he's like, yes, there are blueberries and bananas in it, but he also put two scoops of ice cream in it. So that's why it tasted so much better than the smoothies I make because I put like, I put like yogurt, I put like Greek yogurt in mine. I don't normally put ice cream in it because I'm try when I'm doing the smoothies, I, I'm trying to be healthy and I normally put spinach in smoothies too, just to get those greens. But that does remind me, I need to use those tomatoes up because if I don't, they're going to get all weird looking. So I just wanted to share this with you because I thought it was kind of funny, and that is that is my real fridge. And we're going to have to eat a lot of pizza, guys. <laughs> I mean, luckily Game of Thrones is on tonight, so I can, you know, uh, I'll have plenty to, to eat. I'll, you know, I can binge on pizza and then, I guess, do that. I don't know. So, yeah, lots of pizza. Okay, and something I'm also very excited about that I wanted to talk about is... I have, so a while ago, I filmed a collaboration with this guy named Jesse Minch. Jesse is a really cool guy. He lives in the Orlando area, and he and his wife are also YouTubers. So he had asked me, we'd kind of met through a YouTube event, and he asked me if I wanted to film this series with him. So he told me what it was, and I was like, okay, that sounds cool. So the series he pitched me was like, He's like, I want to try to profile different YouTubers, other YouTubers, and I want to do kind of like uh, helping them with their channel. So like going through their channel and kind of giving them advice, business advice. And Jesse's background, he has a very successful basketball channel. He was on my channel recently in the video I did about YouTubers using an embroidery machine for the first time. He was also on my XTV producer channel talking about making money on YouTube. So we filmed for like a whole day. He came, checked out the Sewing Report headquarters, and we had a good time. Also, we did a collab for his wife Hades' channel. She has a Spanish... We have a lot of YouTube channels between the three of us, apparently. And we filmed a like sewing terms video for her channel. So Jesse's uh, business channel is called Inspire Video Marketing. And uh, he did a video... He's, call, he's calling it YouTuber Intervention. So I'm the first person he intervened for, and I think it turned out pretty well. Um, I've linked it below. You're welcome to check it out. I thought it turned out good. I thought his editing was 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 excellent, but show him some love. And if you'd like to see more, if you want to see more of like the sewing report just from what it's like from a YouTube perspective, I thought it was a really good look at that. And he gave me some really great advice because obviously this is my... This is my job and my business, so I love what I do, but I also, it obviously needs to be a sustainable thing. And sometimes I'm the type of person I don't really, I, you know, I don't really, 
I'm not like I I am business minded, but there's always things I could do better. And I really would like this. I would really like the sewing report to grow into become something even more than just a YouTube channel. So he really gave me a lot of great business advice. Um, and he, you know, and and he when he told me he was done with it, because I'd almost kind of forgot about it. It took him a while to edit it because it is a 38 minute long video. So he uh, told me he's like, it looks old school reality show. And that really is the vibe. I thought he did a really nice, I, I thought he did really well with the editing. Uh, so if you'd like to see more of me and the sewing report, he also kind of reviewed some of my other channels. I've got like three uh, YouTube channels and I also do my husband's. And I also work with a friend who's a client for YouTube. So I, I'm on you, I'm all over YouTube guys. So I thought it turned out really well, and uh, if you want to check it out, I thought it, um, yeah, he he did some really funny things too. I, I enjoyed it, and you know, you can kind of see how crazy my sewing room looks, uh, how insane it is, and uh, yeah, he, you know, and again, we kind of did play it up, but he, but he looks at my analytics, and you know, we talk about, we talk about like what I could do from a business perspective, and it was a good time. I think they're, he and his wife are amazing people and I really enjoyed connecting with them. They're really cool. So yeah, and my sewing room, I did not, I wanted it to look like realistic and, and to be, you know, just how it always is. So this is a look at it. Um, in fact, that's where I'm sitting right now. So he kind of tells me what I could do better. But we had a good time filming it and I thought it was a really, I think it's a really great idea because there are a lot of YouTubers out there and a lot of people like me who are always trying to grow their channel. So if you would like to take a look at it, it is it is out now. And I I think Jesse did a really great, great job putting it together. And I was very flattered he decided he wanted me to be like the first person he went to. Um, you know, obviously played up the fact that I used to be a CNN producer. But again, that's what you got to do to you know, make it, make it appealing for YouTube. So we had a really good time shooting it and, and that, that is out there now. So <laughs> yes. So anyways, if you are watching, oh, and I, yes, if this is your first time here every Sunday night, we talk about sewing and we kind of chit chat. So you're welcome to come join us or you can watch it later. And I would ask if you are new here and you like making stuff, you like sewing, feel free to subscribe to this channel. I love, I love doing YouTube and I love putting out videos and if you have any ideas for what you would like to talk about in the show or just some video ideas, shoot them to me too. I'm, I'm always open. Okay, so there's something else I want to show you. Obviously, I'm on a bit of a Game of Thrones kick and I saw this, I saw it in a Facebook ad and I'm not even sure like why, you know, obviously I've been talking about Game of Thrones a lot. So I found these... I think they're gaming chairs, but it could also work as an office chair. And they have like these elaborate embroidered, obviously I'm a big fan of embroidery. They have embroidered like plush leather seats on them. I mean, this chair does look really comfortable and they had their Game of Thrones themed. So I'm not even sure how much these things are because when you click on like buy, oh wait, is this gonna be the price? When you click on it and you try to like buy it oh wait actually okay this is the first time i've been able to get to a screen with the price on it i will say 389 doesn't seem too bad i was guessing these were a lot more expensive i was gonna guess these were like you know probably like a thousand dollars they just look really fancy i will say 389 not as bad as I thought. I just thought these were kind of funny. I mean, you might, you gotta be a really diehard Game of Thrones fan for this. Also, how would you pick a house? That I think that would be kind of difficult. I think I would probably pick House Targaryen. Uh, but I mean, how hard, like, this is, I don't know, I just found this to be a really, like, over-the-top Game of Thrones licensed product. I mean, you could, oh, you can get a Dark Knight one? Whoa. For all the diehard Batman fans, I don't even know what that is. Clearly, I'm not nerdy enough for for these for these ones. But uh, yeah, I just saw this in a Facebook ad, and knowing me, I did click on it because I was curious. But yeah, Game Game of Thrones embroidered 
office slash gaming chairs. But they do look pretty comfortable. So, I mean, you know, there, there's that. So if you are in the market for a super, super expensive chair, you know, I wonder if you could sew in these. I don't know if it would be, I don't know how, how it would do with the sewing machine, but it does look very comfortable. My husband does game. I'm probably not going to order this for him. Although these chairs do have really good reviews, so comfortable as a car seat? Okay. Wow, these people are, okay, they're buying a lot of chairs. Wonder how come people are buying two instead of one? Is it because you game with a friend? I don't know. But I just thought these were kind of hilarious and I wanted, I'm probably going to share, continue sharing weird Game of Thrones products as I find them. So, uh, sorry in advance. I just find them really amusing. So, yeah, so we had a lot of, a uh, lot of stories this week to get through. And uh, if you, if you have any suggestions or something you want to talk about, let me know. YouTube has been pretty lit this weekend, though. Um, I've been kind of following everything that's going on with, like, Toddy Westbrook and James Charles, and oh my gosh, this is... YouTube is getting really crazy. I I don't even know what to say about that. All right, so... All right, let's, let's read some comments. Hello, everyone out there. All right, we got Sodium, Jackie, Anna, Jamie, and Jamie... So I have not really used the clapper yet. So Jamie is referring, I got this wooden clapper from Nancy's Notions and, and she wanted to see that. I have not um, really used it yet. I've been kind of preoccupied with those, with that butterfly software. So that's been like most of the week. But I have used a clapper in the past, Jamie. I've, I, I think I have the Dritz, the one by Dritz. Sorry, my nose is kind of itchy. I have the one by Dritz, and I do like it, and I use it. I think a clapper is a worthwhile investment, if you, especially if you do quilting and garment sewing. Those two things, I find I use the clapper a lot to get my seams flat. So what I normally do is I will press, I'll steam whatever, I'll, you know, I'll steam press whatever I'm doing, take off the iron real quick, and then put the clapper directly on top of it and kind of leave it for a few seconds. And it really absorbs the heat out of the fabric, so it kind of helps to like set your crease and it, you know, I, I think it works. I, especially with quilting, I really like it. Also, if you do a lot of garments, pants, they're great for doing creases or if you're doing a hem and you want that, and you want that hem line to be pretty crisp. So I think clappers are great and I, I've had one for several years and I use it fairly frequently. So I am definitely a fan and yes, happy again, happy Mother's Day to everybody who's joining us here. All right, yes, Sodium Craig definitely has a really nice sewing space, and I think it's really neat that they're highlighting that on the show. I thought that was pretty pretty cool, and I'm, I'm, I'm rooting for Craig. All right, totally DIY it. Then buy two because they actually use those as seats in their cars. <laughs> Greetings. Oh, hello, Jane. We have two Jamies here. Okay, awesome. We've got River City Creative. Jackie's here. Okay, so... Let's see if there's anyone on Instagram that has been using hashtag sewing report squad. All right. And I apologize, guys. My nose is super, I don't know why, but it's very itchy right now. So, of course, that's always, that's always the way it goes, right? All right. All right. No new posts, but guys, if you do... Use hashtag sewing report squad on Instagram. You can get the chance to have your post featured during this live show. So I will be checking every week to see if anyone is is using it. And if so, we will feature your post right here on the show. Um, so, okay. So, you know what? Let's, for all the Game of Thrones fans out there too, I do want to ask, what did, what did you think of the last couple episodes without like necessarily spoiling it? What, what does everybody think? I... I, I will say I'm with season eight. I'm a little I'm a little disappointed. I'm gonna be honest. I I think the writing has been kind of weak this season, and the storyline is a little is even for Game of Thrones. It's a little bit too unbelievable, and I find myself thinking really like so many times. So there's only two episodes left. I don't know how they're gonna pull this out or end this in a way that obviously you're not going to you're not going to appease every fan out there, but I don't know. I've, I've had some issues with this season storyline. Of course, I still enjoy the show. I still love the characters. 
but the storylines, particularly the battle strategy, for it has been very, to me, very disappointing. I don't know. And there's been certain aspects that I'm like, I don't know, guys. So, who knows? Yeah, Jade, I've been totally worn out by the end of the last two episodes. It's one of those shows, it's very, like, mentally exhausting to watch that show. And I have been watching, I've been kind of re-watching the show from the beginning, just because I'd kind of forgotten about certain stuff. And what re-watching it, I've caught so much more that I missed the first time around. That happens to me every time I re-watch a show. And I just pick up a lot on a lot more nuances that I that I didn't before. I had totally forgotten about several of the storylines. I was like, oh yeah, I forgot that happened, or so and so did this to somebody else. But it is a pretty like emotionally taxing show. And there's a lot to like it's one of those shows you can't just kinda it's hard for me to watch when I'm doing something else because it's when you look away for a second, you're like, oh shoot, I missed that part. So it's one of those shows where it really needs your undivided attention for you to like really understand everything that's going on. There's so many characters it is kind of hard to keep track of. And it's just like, you're like, uh, yeah. But the last couple, the last couple episodes, I've just been like, oh my gosh, I don't know. So I don't know what's gonna, I don't know what's gonna happen at the end. I feel like there's a pretty good chance I might be a little bit disappointed in the ending, but you know, I, I'm sure they're not just making the ending for me, so I don't know. But there, yeah, I don't know. So there, there's that. But what are you guys up to this week? Are you sewing? Um, so I did actually finish a sewing project this week, and I know I've been kind of thinking about my sewing machine usage. And the last four months, it's been like eighty percent embroidery machine, twenty percent regular sewing machine, which is kind of strange. But I did actually complete a pretty, pretty good project this week, and that is going to be a video. And guys, I have been editing like a beast. I'm going to have to edit, like, this week is going to be pretty much all editing for the most part. So that is going to be interesting. Um, yes, but I did do a lot of sewing and embroidery this week, so that was fun. I made some Mother's Day gifts. And, uh, and I will say the embroidery, the embroidery machine is really handy for last minute gifts. Like if I have to make something, I can get some towels I bought and then do like a really cute design. And it makes a really nice gift for somebody and it doesn't, it's not like super time intensive. So it's something you can really do pretty fast. So I've been using the embroidery machine and I made, um, I made Noodle Heads Poolside Tote. So I've been, I've been, I had to shoot the whole thing. I'm also doing a video all about making those freestanding lace butterflies. And I've got a couple other things planned in the works. But this week, oh my gosh, I'm going to have to do, I'm going to have to do so much editing. I, my head might pop off. So that's going to be really funny. I don't know. So probably not a lot of sewing this week. Probably more like editing, computer stuff. So I'm not really looking forward to that, but it's something that has to be done. Okay, so Anna says I binge watched the series Versailles. What what is that about? That sounds kind of up my alley. All right, Jamie is finishing a summer top using some oh fabric you got from my D stash. All right, awesome. And I and I know I have been talking about doing a giveaway, and that is definitely coming. So this week I'm also hoping to kind of get together stuff that I want to do the giveaway for. So I need to kind of get all that stuff in one place central. I need to get organized really bad and then and then uh, try to figure out what like how I'm going to do this giveaway and what what all is going to go in the giveaway uh, box or whatnot because uh, I've got a lot of stuff I would like to give away and, and try to spread the love. There's a lot of items that I just have too many of or you know was sent to me but something that quite honestly I'm probably never going to use myself never going to get to, or it would take me like 50 years. So I would really like to do some giveaways. So if you are here and you're new to sewing and you don't have a lot of um, supplies, you know, I, I kind of want to do something where I make sure that some of these things get to someone who doesn't have a lot of sewing supplies. So maybe we'll do something like that. I, I just want it to be a little more, you know, meaningful and, and to go to someone who really needs 
need sewing supplies. Um, so I'm, 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 I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Um, all right. Yeah, okay. So I'm glad people, I, I gotta say, I'm really excited about the butterflies too. I was making butterflies like all of this week and then working on that tote bag. So, and I, and then I got a pair of shoes and I'm going to be doing something with the butterflies in the shoes. So I think that'll be really fun too. But there's just, I don't know, it's one of those things where the butter, I have so many ideas for the butterflies that, you know, I'm not sure, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get to them all. But I think there's a lot of really cool things you can do, especially with the freestanding lace. You know, if you do it on that water-soluble stabilizer and then dissolve it, you can really sew it onto anything. You can, and I want to try to do some like unconventional items. So I think that'll be a lot of fun. All right. Hello, Eddie. Eddie Jr. Is this a guy here? All right. Hello, Eddie. All right. And Jen is working on a weighted blanket. You know, I am very intrigued by those. I was looking at how expensive they were and I was like, wow, those are really pricey. I wonder if you could, I'm sure you could make them. But, and I was kind of wondering, I've heard that weighted blankets just really kind of, kind of calm you down and help with anxiety. And I think that would be kind of neat. Like, not just for kids, but for adults too. Like, I, I wonder if it would make a difference if I tried a weighted blanket. I don't know. All right, and Anna says, uh, Versailles is about the reign of, reign of King Louis the, uh, is this King Louis the, the fourth? All right, sorry, I'm not very good with my Roman numerals. Eddie, thank you very much. He says, you have a great channel. Thanks for putting out great content. Yeah, I have both the PE770 and PE800. Wow, you're, you're really doing... Double duty. So I want to ask, do you have like an embroidery business? Is that why you have the two machines so you can kind of crank, keep them cranking both, both at once? Or do you just want like the updated version? But I know a lot of people, especially if you have a home embroidery business, you probably, have, I mean, I'm going to assume you probably have more than one machine to kind of, kind of, you can be, be working both of them at the same time. All right, we've got the, we got the, we have a guy here. All right. I, and thank you to you and your wife for watching the videos. Yes, and, and Jamie, I'm also interested in, Jen, if you have a pattern for the weighted blanket, feel free to share that, I, I, you know, and I, that's not the first time I've heard people ask about weighted blankets, but I've just never made, I've never made one before. I think it would be kind of a fun project. So, you know, hey, so cool. So yeah, I, I, now we're, now we literally are just chit-chatting, but you know what, this is fun. I don't really care. So <laughs> we're here, this is by super messy, uh, yeah, things are things are getting really messy up in here. So, yeah, I don't know. All right. Sodium, you can totally make weighted blankets. I'm an occupational therapist who works in schools and makes them for students. That's wonderful. Jackie says, I've been cricket watching, not sewing, embroidering, or quilting lately. Have the Explore Air, not the maker, but I've only used it twice since I bought it a while ago. I'll see the, how this works out. All right. Anna says, I've heard the weighted blankets take a toll on the maker with shoulder and back problems. Is this true? Oh, is it because you have to kind of keep holding it while you're sewing it? I mean, I, I could definitely see that. I mean, I get, I don't have a lot of upper body strength, but like when you're having to hold something up, it does kind of, you know, your arms kind of get tired. So I can sort of see that. But, uh, but yeah, so if you guys have any um, suggestions for stuff you'd like to talk about the live show, or if you see a story throughout the week, feel free to like, um, maybe leave it in a comment on one of the previous live shows and just say, hey, I saw this story, would love to talk about it, and, uh, and maybe we can do that. All right, so Eddie says, no embroidery business, but we make a bunch of shirts and embroidered stuff for our kids. Multi -machine, multiple machines help crank stuff up. Like when we did R.I.P. shirts for us and relatives. Okay. All right. All right. And Jen says she loves her hers weighted blanket. I just want to update to a heavier one. I don't have a pattern. I've just watched a lot of videos. I made one as a graduation gift and she loved it. I kind of just want to know what it's like to use one. Like, does it help calm you down? Does it help you sleep better? Because I always have... A, I'm one of those people. I have a really hard time falling asleep. So... I'm a pretty late night person, so normally I stay up to about two or three in the morning, sometimes four, sometimes later, and then I usually don't hate me, but I normally wake up around 11 or sometimes 12, but I, I usually kind of end up working late, like, and then just going to bed, but 
if I try to go to bed at like two, I don't end up falling asleep until four. So it takes me a really long time to fall asleep. And if there's something out there that that would make it possible to fall asleep faster, I would probably try it. Like, obviously, I, I try to stay away from from sleep. I really try to stay away from sleep aids. I don't. I have not generally had great experiences with that. Sometimes I'll have a glass of wine, but a while ago, somebody, uh, a doctor told me that melatonin long-term could kind of mess up your sleep cycle, so I don't take melatonin. Um, Benadryl works really well for me, but again, that's not really a road I want to go down. I don't really want to need, you know, medication to fall asleep. I'd like to do it naturally. Uh, maybe I could just eat like all of the pizza. I guess I could eat all of the pizza and just see how that worked out too. So I mean that that could be a possibility. I don't know if that would be a great idea and I'd probably be five pounds heavier the next day but I don't know. So <laughs> it's been fun talking to you guys though and uh, yeah and let me know what do you think of this new I so this is the first time I had tried scheduling a live show versus just doing it in real time. Uh, did this make it easier for you guys to remember? And uh, is this something you would like to see every time? Or do you like it the other way where, you know, I just hit live? But this way, it, this was kind of a pain to set up. I will be honest. I had some, I, had, I definitely found it a little bit tricky. And I ran into some snags. But, I mean, I'm alive now. So hopefully things are, hopefully things are okay now. So, I don't know. All right. Honest says, I feel your pain. I don't sleep either. It is ter Yeah, it, it kind of does suck. Like, once I'm asleep, I'm asleep, but it just takes me so long to fall asleep. I end up wasting, like, two hours of just laying in bed. So, normally, I do, like, have some background noise on just so I'm, like, you know, not just sitting there. You know, I don't know. So, okay. So, Jen says, I have bad insomnia and anxiety, and it has helped me. That is really good to know. I might... I don't know, maybe that'll be a future project. We could put butterflies on it. No, I don't know. I don't know. So, anyways, this has been fun, guys. I think I'm going to sign off soon. I got I to gotta, I gotta keep editing, and I'll, I'll kind of show you. All right, actually, if you guys want to see, I will show you what it looks like when you're editing. All right, so. Hold on one second. All right, this is what it looks like. I know this is where the magic all happens. So this is, uh, I'm going to do a video. I've already shot it, but I need to edit it. And I'm doing, I'm doing a video about the worst rated sewing products on Amazon that I did actually purchase and try out. But I use Adobe Premiere to edit. And then what I'm doing now, so this is my, this, this line up top, this is my, uh, like a roll so a roll is like the stuff where you're on camera you're like your main shot and then my like b shot or like b roll is actually my second camera which is a close-up of all of the stuff i'm doing so i usually kind of lay all my raw on the timeline i line up all of the audio because i record my audio separately and then right now i'm kind of going through and cutting i'm kind of doing like an a roll cut so i'm just basically going through and picking out all the parts that I want and then I'm cutting out all the parts I don't want and then you have to go back in and and also kind of decide like since I'm doing two cameras for this video then I have to go through and decide which camera is going to be featured since I've got two to choose from and then I also add like graphics and music and the like the fun stuff so Usually the editing process goes through a few different steps. Um, this one's just going to take a while since I've got about, I had about 50 minutes of raw, which is a lot. That's a lot for raw. And so I don't know if this, is, I don't know if this interests you or not, but this is, this is how it really happens. So this is, this is going to be the video from, for two weeks from now. Um, I've shot, I think I have three videos I've shot, but I have not edited. So I've got to do that. And then I also have to edit a video for the client I work with as well. I did one, I think I did one like late last week. And then I had to start this one. I'm caught up a few weeks ahead for the sewing report. So that's a plus. But uh, this is, this, and this is what it looks like raw. Like, you know, me doing all kinds of crazy looking stuff. And, uh, 
but this is what this is what the uh, the timeline looks like and here is my like project bin where I keep all of my clips this one had a lot of clips and a lot of uh, like screen screen grabs screen captures of like the Amazon stuff so I thought this would be kind of a funny video um, so that's what it's gonna be so yeah so I just wanted to share that but yeah it's this week is gonna be pretty crazy so I don't know so we'll see how I don't know we'll see if I'm still alive after this but guys, this has been a lot of fun, and for all you Game of Thrones fans out there, uh, I, you know, I hope you enjoy episode five. And we only have one more left, so I'm a little bit, uh, yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty bummed. But at the same time, you know, all good things must come to an end, right? I will right, we'll read a couple more comments. Okay, so Jackie says I like when it's scheduled. Yeah, and I think so. Obviously, we schedule it every week, anyways. This is just kind of a different way of doing like the live stream itself, but I think this worked out okay. I just, I had never done it before and I was kind of nervous because I was kind of afraid if I scheduled the, if I scheduled it in YouTube, does it just turn on at 7 p.m. whether I'm ready or not? But it actually doesn't. I actually have an option. Like once I get in there, I actually have to start the stream. So I won't be like caught off guard. You're not going to like see me in my underwear or anything running around. So. Because I was kind of wondering, I want to be like prepared when the stream starts and not be like, oh my gosh, I'm not ready for this. So it was good to know and it was good practice. Uh, I think we'll be doing this uh, definitely moving forward. I think it's good at least to kind of advertise that this is happening a few hours beforehand. So we will definitely be doing that. But yeah, this has been a lot of fun. Um, I've been kind of a, I also bought a bunch of new makeup this week. Not that that has anything to do with sewing, but it's been kind of fun to experiment with. I, I'm not usually like a makeup girl, but I have been just trying to like break out of my comfort zone and try not to look as, um, as unkempt as I usually do. So we'll, we'll see. But of course, you know, I am, I usually just wear t-shirts and today I'm wearing, um, really old, old navy pajama pants. These are... I mean, probably like eight years old or something. So I'm, I'm kind of a sweatpants girl. And that's probably, if I do make clothing, I'm probably going to do a lot more of that stuff because it's comfortable and because it's something I would actually wear versus something that, you know, like I could make all this really nice stuff, but if I don't have anywhere to wear it, what's, what's the point? So, all right, let's read a couple more comments. All right. Uh, Anna, for me, I just need to be home when I get your alert that you're live. Woohoo! All right, Eddie, we have multiple embroidery machines because we got great deals on them. Oh, lucky you. I'm jealous. We got a couple. PE800 was around Black Friday or Christmas time. Yes, when I remember that because I was like, I had bought mine a few months earlier and I was kicking myself because it was like $100 cheaper than I paid. Because I paid like, I think, $640 or something like that. And then it, it was marked down to like $550 and I was like, ah. So yeah, so you paid four fifty to five hundred. Yeah, that is too good. And guys, if you are in the market for an embroidery machine and you see the PE eight hundred and it's less than, it's less than like five hundred dollars, pick it up. It's an amazing deal. So thank you, Eddie. All right, River City Creative. Have a great week, Terry. All right, Jackie. All right, awesome. And uh, yes, yeah, so thank you guys so much, and I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your or the beginning of your week, whatever you're doing, and happy sewing. I will check in with you guys next week, and I'm sure we'll have more fun. We'll have lots more fun stuff to talk about, but uh, you guys have a great evening. And for all the Game of Thrones fans out there, you know, let's, huh, it's, it's going to be a nail-biting couple weeks, let me tell, let me tell you. All right, I'll see you guys later.